Americans. You know, one of the privileges of being an American is the right to own and use firearms. The Constitution says that very clearly. But along with that right goes responsibility. The responsibility to use these weapons properly. Now, most of you are either attending or have been attending a firearms safety course. Well, that can be a most rewarding experience and a benefit to you all your life. Well, your parents and some of those tough instructors over there have decided that you're mature enough to take on this important responsibility. Now, part of what you'll learn is that one of these things should always be pointed in a safe direction and that every gun is loaded until you personally check to see that it isn't. And that when you shoot, you know what you're shooting at and what's behind the target. Now, these instructors are going to keep hammering on that, and repeating it and repeating it until you get pretty tired of it. But it's important. And that's why we're here to try and make you realize how dangerous one of these things can be. Used wrong, it can be very ugly. Used properly, it can bring you enjoyment all your life. Now I'm going to turn you over to one of these instructors. John Wayne really tells it like it is. Guns can be trouble, serious trouble, when not handled correctly. But they can be a lifetime of shooting sport and enjoyment if you know how to handle them. Big John was also right when he said that you might get a little tired of your instructors repeating and emphasizing the rules of safety. But that's why we're here today, to show you what a gun can do. When you see these demonstrations, I'm sure you'll be able to forgive your instructor for repeating. You will be able to see how important those safety rules really are. I know all of you have watched Western movies, war movies, and cops and robber movies, and I'm glad that you do. So am I. If you didn't, I'd be out of a job. I'm with John Wayne. I like him too. But sometimes people who don't really understand about guns can get some wrong ideas about them from these movies. Not that there's anything wrong with these movies, mind you, but a fella can be misled. For instance, let's take a look at an old Western movie. Here's our hero riding his white horse. Heroes nearly always dressed in white in the old westerns. And here's the villain dressed in black, of course, and needing a shave. He is clearly a shady character. The villain wakes behind a big rock for the hero to ride by and shoots him with his 30-30. Our hero grabs his shoulder and falls from his horse. Obviously hurt, but he is strong and brave and a lot of man. He rolls over and returns the villain's fire. And good triumphs over bad. He kills the bad guy. Okay so far? I'm sure if a man was hit in the shoulder, he'd fall off of his horse. But with modern guns and ammunition, I'm not so sure he'd be able to fight back. Just the shock of a high-powered bullet could kill him. The wound would be very serious. So he'd have to be <laughs> mucho hombre to be able to fight back. But he would have to have a lot of luck to go with it. Through all of this shooting and falling off business, the hero's horse stands quietly nearby. Hero's horses are also special. And after our hero has disposed of the villain, he carefully holsters his gun, staggers to his feet, picks up his white hat and climbs slowly and painfully into the saddle. Holding his wounded shoulder, he rides away. And as he rides by the bad guy's body, he looks the villain over, but doesn't stop. You see, heroes never miss. Well, I'd sure like to own that horse. My horse wouldn't stand still that long. John Wayne ought to know, but to continue. After a long, painful ride, the hero finally gets to town. But he's in bad shape. All slouched down in the saddle and holding his shoulder. 
He sways in the saddle as his horse walks down the street. Townspeople turn to watch as he rides by. As his horse comes to a stop in the middle of the street, he topples from the saddle. A passerby rushes to help, but he just breaks the fall as the hero falls to the ground. People come running from all directions. Housewives with their children, cowboys, a dance hall girl holds the hero's head in her lap, and the town drunk gives him a shot of whiskey. The doctor is called. After checking the hero's heartbeat, he orders the wounded man taken into his office. Everyone helps and they pick up the hero, even by his wounded shoulder, and he is rushed through the door of the doctor's office. Old Doc gets out his pliers and calls for more whiskey. He fishes around in the hero's wounded shoulder for a while and finally pulls out the bullet. The hero is saved and a little bandage will finish off the surgery. And that's that. And with modern high-speed bullets, that old Doc would need more than his pliers. You bet. You tell him, John Wayne. So the important thing to remember is that this tiny bullet coming out of this gun is no toy. It's something you better give a little respect. And now the hero's saved, and he rides out of town the next morning with his arm in a sling. Well, you ought to know better than some of that. If he fell off of his horse in front of the doctor's office, that was just dang fool luck. And you don't give injured people whiskey. That's poor first aid. And with today's modern high-powered ammunition, that old doc didn't need his pliers. That bullet went right on through, and it left a gush off a hole in the backside where it came out. And that hero isn't going to be riding out quite that soon, that's for sure. Now, I'm not making fun of these Western movies. They used old 3030s, 44s, or 3220s, old black powder stuff mostly. And maybe what they show would have been more true in those days. But by golly, it isn't true with today's high-powered smokeless powder guns. Let's make sure we understand that difference. You will be shooting modern guns and they are more powerful. And just what do we mean when we say more powerful? What can they do? Let's watch a demonstration. See this little bullet? This is the bullet we'll be shooting. Sure isn't very impressive, is it? But this little piece of lead and copper can tear your arm off or your leg. Now this is the bullet that comes out of this fine 243 hunting rifle. I know that it's hard for you to believe that this little bullet has that much power. But let's watch the demonstration. See that 50-pound block of ice? Let's get that big husky fellow over there and give him the sledgehammer and ask him to smash that block of ice as hard as he can. Let's see that again in slow motion. Wow, that's a pretty husky guy. And he hit that block of ice a heck of a lick. I'll make you a bet, a bet that this little old bullet can hit a block of ice harder than that big strong man. You want a bet? Well, you just watch. Let's load this rifle with a regular hunting type 243 cartridge. Now, he'll back off a little ways from the ice and we'll try to hit the ice dead center. Let's see what this puny little bullet will do. Let's see that again in slow motion.
Now, what do you think? How would you like to get hit with that little bullet? And remember, this is not special ammunition, a special gun, or trick shooting. This is the kind of a gun and ammunition you may take to go hunting. And anyone can hit that block of ice at this range. So the important thing to remember is that this gun shooting this bullet is not a toy and it must be handled with care and respect. Let's watch another demonstration with this gun. Here's a cement block, a nice new one. Let's put this little metal plate on top of the block. Then, this shiny new half dollar on the plate. Now, let's balance this gallon can of water on top of the half dollar. And finally, here's a good use for an empty pop can. You know, the litter bugs leave these. Now, we've got everything ready for this shot. Our shooter is going to fire another of those little bullets. This time, the bullet will hit the can of water, not the block or anything else. The bullet will hit that can so hard that it'll explode, just like dynamite. The explosion should smash the cement block. Throw the pop can way up in the air and we'll wait and see what it does to the half dollar. You can shoot straighter sitting down than you can standing up. You notice that the shooter is taking careful aim at the can. I'm sure your instructors teach you to always make sure your bullet goes exactly where you want it to. So let's see what happens. Like that. It's hard to believe that all that damage came out of this little thing. Well, let's go see what happened. That block is completely smashed. And let's see here. You can see right where the bullet went into the can. Where's that 50 cent piece? Oh, here it is. I want to keep that. Let's see, look at the bottom of this can, by golly. You can see President Kennedy's picture printed there. Boy, that can must have really taken a wallop. Are you beginning to believe in the power of this little bullet? That's why your instructor keeps saying, watch that muzzle. Is that gun loaded? He doesn't want you to get hit with one of those bullets or anyone else. Let's take a look at another kind of gun. This is a 410 shotgun. A little small for me, but about right for a boy or girl to learn to hunt with. It's no toy either. This is the shell that's used in it. Do you know what's inside? Right, a whole bunch of little BBs. Even smaller than the ones used in a BB gun. Don't look like they could hurt anyone. Oh, you think they can? At close range, these little BBs are just as dangerous as that high-powered rifle we saw earlier. Let's give this gun a test and see what it'll do. Now, I'm going to put this head of cabbage on this post. That head of cabbage is pretty much like you and me, 90% water. What happens to Ed is about what had happened to you or me. Let's back off a few feet or so here from the target. You know, most firearms accidents happen from zero to ten feet. He deliberately tried not to hit that head of cabbage dead center. Just rip off one side. 
That's what would happen to a man if he was hit at close range with a shotgun. Well, that's a pretty ugly mess. And another thing, don't let your mom know about this new way of making coleslaw. She might use up all your ammunition. Coleslaw? Well, I hope you've gotten the idea that this little shotgun and those tiny little BBs really can hurt you. And remember, this shotgun is no toy. Let's look at another rifle, the kind I cut my teeth on, the one most boys and girls learn to shoot with. It's a dandy. I always enjoy shooting a 22. Again, we have a little tiny bullet. This one's even smaller than that 243 we used earlier. And just like that bullet, it's hard to believe that such a little thing can be so dangerous, but it can. This little 22 bullet can travel a mile and a half. That 243 bullet can go three miles. Let's take this little gun and see what it can do. We'll put this potato on top of this post, and again, we'll shoot from about 10 feet to simulate an accident. How's that for potato salad? How'd you like to get hit in the arm or the leg with that? Today we've seen what guns can do, even the smallest guns. And we hope you now understand why your instructors continually repeat, watch that muzzle. Is that gun loaded? Are you sure of your target? They want you to be able to handle that gun safely. As John Wayne says, Well, guns can really be fun if you'll just remember the things you've learned today. You're going to have some wonderful times in the years to come. And that's just what I wish you. The best of sports outdoors. And the safest. <laughs>